Outlook. It was a lot of wind, and we heard almost sound like a train coming through here. Well, tornadoes, deadly flash floods, and torrential downpours, the storms that hit Texas are moving east. We're tracking how the storms will impact your plans today and into the work week. And a story breaking from the Caribbean, the U.S. Navy may have found the wreckage of a cargo ship that went missing during last month's Hurricane Joaquin. We will tell you what they did to find the ship. And today, the first day of November, but don't put away those short sleeves just yet. We're going to show you how much of the country could see a fall warm-up this week. That and much more coming up right now on Weekend Recharge. Welcome to Weekend Recharge. Got to give you a time check. 9 a.m. Eastern time, by the way. I'm Marie LaRosa. And I'm Paul Goodlow. We're going to start right now with a very wet Sunday morning for many of you. So perhaps you're enjoying that extra hour of sleep yes. because, yeah, it's a nice morning to sleep out here. Take a look at New Orleans. Oof, I'm pretty sure it was a pretty wild night on <laughs> Bourbon Street like last night. Here comes the street sweeper just in time, like we planned that. All right, <laughs> then to the right, you see uh, Atlanta is somewhere down underneath there. Both cities dealing with some rain showers today. Maria, definitely a wet end to their weekend. Uh, two of our big stories that we're going to cover with a snapshot and take you through the rest of the show have a lot to do with plentiful moisture. We've got this and then what's happening in the northwest and then right in between another big story. So let's start with this in the northwest. The first significant rain and snow. We're talking about high impact to travel. We'll time that out for you and how much snow we're really talking about and more rain and more severe weather across the south and the southeast. Not just today, but this is going to lead into the Monday morning drive. So we'll time that out for you. But how about this? 15 to 20 degrees above average for a good part of the country. This too will be on the move so we're going to talk about just how high these temperatures will go and of course how long that kind of heat will stick around. All right, so we got an idea of the big stories we're covering, but a lot has to do with the thunderstorms and all that activity that we had yesterday, too. In fact, this hour, we're tracking tornadoes yesterday across Texas, but the storms are not over yet. Let's bring in our storm specialist, Dr. Greg Postel, to track where the storms are heading right now. Paul and Maria, thank you very much. That's right, you know, some of the same areas that were raining really hard yesterday are raining again today. Uh, a little quieter, though, in terms of the thunderstorm activity. Some more stable air has moved in, cooler and somewhat drier, so it's suppressing some of those storms. But... I think that's going to change later on this afternoon. Here's the setup. We have low pressure in northwestern Gulf of Mexico. And let's track today the uh, progress of that warm front because on the south side of that thing, as it moves northward, it's going to bring more warm and humid air northward into the region into, for example, parts of the Panhandle, Florida, southern Alabama, and southern Georgia. It is along and just south of that front in that zone that we could have some severe weather today as more instability comes back into the picture. Looking at the larger scale features that are going to be pushing this thing along, there's the upper low. You can see that pretty clearly. Can you see that thing spinning around like a top right out here over central Texas? But it's out ahead of it, and you can see the moisture moving northward. This all water vapor imagery shows you not only the motions at high altitudes, but gives you an idea of how wet or how humid the atmosphere is through a deep layer. And there's a lot of that moisture streaming northward, as evidenced by those colors on the heels of a 100 plus mile per hour jet stream. So there's not gonna be much time b before this moisture gets well entrenched across the southeast again and lead to some significant rainfall totals. Looking at atmospheric moisture in particular throughout a deep layer throughout about the first 15,000 feet or so, these reds show very high water vapor content coming back in. So there's going to be a lot of rain. And as we mentioned, also the possibility of severe weather as that instability moves northward. So timing it out hour by hour this afternoon and evening. More severe weather could be in play across this zone in Alabama and Florida and also more rain, quite a bit more. Watch this sort of sort of expanse right here of the rain shield. Tomorrow morning, there could be some severe weather along this zone as well and heavy rain in the Atlanta area. So if you want to talk about how much we're going to get as we go through the entire day of Monday, we're looking at some places getting perhaps three to five inches in a swath there from Alabama through Georgia and northern South Carolina. So that's a significant amount. But then today with the severe weather, later on this afternoon, I think that's when it would be. 
it's those areas shaded in red that have the greatest risk for that, with maybe the possibility of a tornado or two. Maria and Paul, back to you. All right, Dr. Postel, thank you so much. Well, again, big rain across parts of the Gulf Coast states. Joining us now is Tim Berry with the National Weather Service office out of Tallahassee, Florida. Thanks for joining us this morning, sir. What kind of activity are you guys seeing already this morning? I know there have been some rain bands that move through. Well, good morning. Yes, we already saw a swath of rain push through, mostly across our western area, which includes the Florida Panhandle, uh, the southeast corner of Alabama, and uh, portions of southwest Georgia. Generally, one to two inches of rain has already fallen overnight. Now, we did see a pocket uh, of close to three inches. In fact, the Dothan Airport picked up 2.99 inches of rain in one hour, and that prompt, uh, prompted a flood warning for this morning, which has since expired. Now, I know you guys are looking at the same kind of data we are, and we've always been surprised with the progress of this storm of those kind of sneaker rain totals. Are you seeing anything that where you can see some of those unexpected higher rainfall? Uh, right now, it looks like uh, everything is progressive. It has moved further east. It has weakened as well. But we do expect uh, regeneration later on today and overnight tonight as that low in the Gulf develops and moves off to the northeast. As that low moves eastward, again, a little shear we're talking about as well. Are you concerned about the risk for severe thunderstorms, even tornadoes today? There is a slight risk for an isolated tornado or two. We'll be watching that as well. And uh, real quickly, too, uh, you guys cover coastal areas. Uh, any coastal concerns? The only coastal concern at the present time is we do have a, a high risk uh, for rip currents along our Panhandle beaches, which extend from Walton Beach to uh, Cape Sandblast. And also looking forward to Monday, people planning for Monday morning. What should people be prepared to uh, deal with as they wake up on their Monday morning? Well, as that low moves inland, we are looking at a possible solid line of showers and thunderstorms over our western zones. Again, that would be the Florida Panhandle, southeast Alabama, and it will be progressing eastward through the day, although it does look like the, the line of storms may be weakening as it moves close to the Tallahassee area. All right. Tim Barry from the National Weather Service in Tallahassee. We appreciate your time so much, sir. Thank you. Let's talk about what we know right now with the situation here. There have been, in terms of this line of severe weather from yesterday, six deaths in connection with these storms as they rolled through Texas. In fact, the Houston Fire Department says it responded to more than 130 water rescues on Saturday. And the Mississippi Emergency Management Agency says they've received initial reports from four counties, including damage to a dozen homes and multiple businesses. A high rip current risk is in effect through this evening for Alabama and Northwest Florida. Florida beaches, as we just heard. Hey, take a look at this brand new video into the Weather Channel. Watch closely in the darkness. You actually see a barn get destroyed in oh the middle of a damaging storm. Goodness, this was in Los Coyotes, Texas, early Friday morning. Shared to us via the National Weather Service office in Brownsville. We'll be back. The cold truth is, there's no easy way to do your job when you're sick. Tough symptoms? Need Alka-Seltzer Plus cold and cough. It's four cold symptom fighters put you back in control. Stay unstoppable. Alka-Seltzer Plus. Don't miss Ace's biggest ever buy two, get one free LED sale now through Sunday. Buy any two select LED bulbs and get one free. Mix and match from our best-selling, longest-lasting LED bulbs and get over 80% in energy savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Wow, sweet new Subaru, huh, Mitch? Yep. You're selling the Mitch Mobile? Man, we had a lot of good times in this baby. What's your dad want for it? Like 150 grand. 200 if they want that tape deck. You're not gonna tell your dad about the time my hamster had babies in the back seat, are you? That's just normal wear and tear, dude. Subaru has the highest resale value of any brand, according to Kelly Blue Book. And Mitch. Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Welcome to the Sleep Revolution, all new Emergen Z, a natural way to power down with melatonin plus vitamin C and other antioxidants to work their magic while you sleep. Don't just sleep, revitalize. New Emergen Z, power down to power up. Did you know that good nutrition is critical for brain health? Brain food. Hmm. Insure has B vitamins that help support brain health. Now that's smart nutrition. Insure's complete balanced nutrition has 26 vitamins and minerals and 9 grams of protein. Insure, take life in. Start the interview with a firm handshake. I know! Don't do that! Try head and shoulders instant relief. It cools on contact and also keeps you 100% flake free. <gasps> Try head and shoulders instant relief for cooling relief in a snap. I don't know what that was. It felt huge. Don't move, man.
currently in our area, 83 degrees under fair skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly clear, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, a few passing clouds, otherwise generally sunny, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Tonight, two undefeated teams, two future Hall of Fame quarterbacks, and only one will remain unbeaten. Two of the NFL's best square off in the biggest game of the season. Packers, Broncos. Tonight, only on NBC. Hey, welcome back to Week at Recharge. It is now a new month, November, and... Yeah, we had some cold spells in October, but guess what? <laughs> November is now starting that way. In fact, right now, definitely on the cooler side across the Northeast. Not super cold, but cooler. It is fall, by the way, but we're going to have a taste of perhaps a, a warm-up. Call it Indian summer, have you, if you already had your freeze here. We're going to see the position of that high clockwise flow, bringing you a southerly southwesterly wind. Always a warm wind here across the Midwest. And that's going to push our temperature some 10, 15, 20 degrees above average. So there we go. We should be in the 40s and 50s. We're talking 50s, 60s, even 70s. Des Moines, 73 as we head through this afternoon. Tomorrow, the warmth continues here. Chicago, 71 degrees. Minneapolis, 65 degrees. So the warmth continues here into Tuesday. Day. We're pushing 74 in Kansas City, who won last night, 3-1 and one in the World Series uh, games. 77 in St. Louis on Tuesday. Chicago still sticking in the 70s, lower 70s, as we head towards the middle of this week. So Chicago, look at this. Our forecast for Wednesday is 73. The record high for that date is 74, so we're getting close to record territory as we head uh, through the Midwest here. The Northeast, again, temperatures today are okay. They're cool to start with, but we're moving a few degrees above average as we head on towards today. And also, you have that warmth come your way as we head on towards Monday, even Tuesday. Talking like temperatures move from the 50s to the 60s. Even some 70s pop up here. 73 in Cincinnati, 71 in Pittsburgh, D.C. 72 degrees on Tuesday. Yes, that is warm. And also to get on the warmth, the southeast as well. Orlando will be in the 90s for the next couple of days. Our average high this time of the year is around 81, 80 degrees. So, yeah, a good chunk of the nation outside of the west coast will be warm as we head into this week, Maria. So you may be wondering why are we showing you this video? Well, winter's going to be here before mm -hmm. you know it. And while we can't tell exactly when the rain, snow, freezing rain, those temperatures will arrive, you can get an idea of what to expect. Here's Tom Nizzle with a look. Hey, winter's right around the corner, and this year El Nino is going to be a major player in the winter weather. Let's look at five things that we know about this winter. And the first is our temperature outlook. Temperatures are likely going to be above normal all the way from the western U.S. across the northern U.S. and below normal for the south central part of the nation and the southeast. Number two, precipitation outlook goes for likely above normal precipitation again across most of the south, and that works its way up the mid-Atlantic seaboard all the way to parts of southern New England. California's in this as well. On the dry side, most of the northern U.S. from the Pacific Northwest right through the Great Lakes likely to be below normal. On to number three. For number three, we're going to deal with California's drought. They've been under exceptional drought conditions for a long time. But this year, under an El Nino, and in particular, a strong El Nino, we've got good news. Our strongest El Ninos in 82 and 83, 97, 98, are averaged together. And in those years, we got as much as double the precipitation across California that we normally get. So that is good news for you. On to number four. On number four, there's a number of large-scale players, and we already talk about El Nino really being the biggest player, but there's some other features we need to look at. The first is all of this warm water sitting in the northeastern Pacific Ocean and off the coast of California. We don't know what that is going to do right now, so that is a big question mark and how that might influence the weather 
at different points through the winter. Our second player is all the way over into the Atlantic Basin. In the North Atlantic here, we have a feature that we refer to as NAO, or the North Atlantic Oscillation. That index talks about atmospheric pressure here between Iceland and the Azores, and it can have a big influence on the jet stream pattern across northeastern uh, United States during the winter. So that is another question mark as to how that may influence the winter at times. And that takes us to point number five. We look at the seasonal averages, but in any season, we can get extremes of one side or the other. And boy, I'll tell you what, when we look at our two strongest El Nino years, 82, 83, and 97, 98, Mother Nature threw us a couple of big events, especially in the Northeastern US. In February of 1983, we had the President's Day snowstorm, which produced over two feet of snow from Washington, DC, all the way up through Boston, Mass. And in January of 1998, we had one of the greatest ice storms on record. Three to five inches inches of ice accumulated in parts of northern New England, northern New York, and southeastern Canada. So the cards have been dealt for the season. We don't know what Mother Nature is holding here and how she's going to play them out. So please keep up your guard. We'll send it back to you. And we're going to keep up to date with the forecast. And we have sizable snow heading to the Pacific Northwest along with all of the rain. You see the radar right now. It's falling in the Cascade, the Olympic Mountains, and some of that even making it into Northern California. Uh, by the way, Portland tying its record warmest October. The previous record? last October. So they've had two record warm Octobers here now in a row. Here's the setup. Low pressure tracking to the east. You have high pressure bringing those winds driving onshore across the northwest. It is the mountain, uh, the mountain areas that we are concerned about when it comes to travel. So watch those passes because that's where the snow is really going to pile up. Otherwise it's heavy uh, rainfall and wind with high surf along the coast. It's not just today, tonight where some of that snow may be heavy at times and rain heavy at times, but even in through tomorrow morning. All right, we're tracking rain across the south as well. You get used to the funk in your man cave. You think it smells fine, but your wife smells this. Luckily for all your hard to wash fabrics, there's Febreze Fabric Refresher. It doesn't just mask, it eliminates odors you've gone nose blind to. Use Febreze Fabric Refresher till it's fresh and try Pluggable Febreze to continuously eliminate odors for up to 45 days of freshness. Pluggable Febreze and Fabric Refresher, two more ways to breathe happy. Lowe's presents How to Be a Good Listener. This new pedestal sink just screams elegance. It also whispers, Dan, you're a genius because you got this guy to install it for you. Now get a Kohler Elliston pedestal sink, faucet, and toilet for only $3.87 when you buy the suite. It's Olive Garden's 20th anniversary of Never Ending Possible. So we're celebrating by offering you over 20 delicious choices starting at $9.99. Like creamy new pesto Alfredo or crispy chicken Frida. Plus unlimited salad and breadsticks for a limited time at Olive Garden. Here's something new. Now you can get the Weather Channel forecast on the new L.L. Bean app. Just tap, shop, and discover. app from L.L. Bean, featuring forecasts from the Weather Channel. Download today. I'm Mike Bettis. That's Sarah. Hi. Welcome to the set of a brand new show, Weather Underground. There'll be experts, bloggers, the smartest weather minds in the business on every, every screen, screen you have 24 hours, hours a day. day. Geeking out on what's happening in weather, how it happens, and why it's so freaking cool. Weather Underground, weeknights at 6. Bahamas Paradise Cruise Line wants you to sail away with us. So we are offering an amazing cruise rate of just 109. Your two-night Bahamas cruise includes five-course dining, amazing live shows, an invigorating spa, lots of fun on the ship, and more fun in the Bahamas. If you're looking for a longer vacation, add two or four nights at the all-inclusive, beautiful Grand Lucayan Resort to your cruise. Enjoy spectacular white sand beaches, family fun, fine dining, golf, and so much more. A two-night Bahamas cruise for just $109 with an option to add a Bahamas Beach Resort is an amazing deal. What are you waiting for? Call 800-814-7100. That's 800-814-7100. 800-814-7100. Too big to miss. Here we go, here we go! The reviews are pouring in. <laughs> See why people love three scientists walk into a bar. Sunday nights at 10 on the Weather Channel.
currently in our area, 83 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Coming up on 20 minutes past the hour, and we often try and give your forecast and, and put it in context. So it gives you beyond just the highs and lows and really fits it into this weather story for you. We're going to talk about what we're looking ahead to as far as November goes when it comes to temperatures. But we first have to start with where we've been. And this is a pretty amazing graphic here where you're looking at the year to date temperatures uh, compared to average. And you see a whole lot of red. And it's not just red, it's the dark red. There are a lot of spots that are thus far in the year seeing record warmth. And you look at this sort of anomaly here, that's a whole, we could do a whole show on that, but uh, maybe tied to the Gulf Stream. But the, the overall story is that much of the globe and almost the entire globe is above average for temperatures. But when you see a graphic like this and the record warmest years on record, this is what we have so far, right? Look at those lines. Now look at where we are uh, currently. And we are on pace not to only to be record warm year, but well above what we've already seen. So now let's bring you back to what we're seeing in the coming week, the coming days. We have temperatures that are 10 to 20 degrees above average for most of the uh, northern half of the country. As we get into the rest of November, there's one spot where we think maybe cooler than average, but we do think that that trend for warmer than average temperatures will continue from the west to the Midwest, the East, and the Southeast. And so kind of give you a, a big picture. Yeah, but speaking of that warmth almost nationwide here, it's coming just a few weeks before perhaps the big holiday right. shopping season mm -hmm. ramps up. So perhaps there's a huge economic cost to this. All right, you know we want to dig deeper. So let's bring in our business weather expert, Paul Walsh. Paul, good to see you. You see that forecast and you are definitely crunching numbers already. What does it mean to retailers and the economy? Well, for retailers, Maria, it's actually not good news because a large part of what retailers are selling this time of year is seasonal products. And when it's unseasonably warm, we just don't buy as much as we would normally. And so they're actually hurting. For the economy in general, though, it's actually good news. There's more of us out and about. We're shopping. Price of gas is at record level lows. So in general, on net, it's a good thing for the economy. And speaking of businesses, though, as they plan for seasonal wares and it's feeling out of season, do businesses plan for these kind of situations? They do. More and more, they're using data and analytics to understand the historical impact that weather's had on sales, for example, and then using that information to predict how changes in the weather, how the weather forecast is going to change what we're all going to be needing. And they use that information to help them better stock the shelves and also advertise. So they can't yet yet change the weather, but they certainly can plan for it and exercise better judgment around around their business. All right. It's all about me, though, Paul. What does this mean for me and my wallet? Well, Maria, I think if you like buying winter clothes, this is going to be a great year, especially as we move towards uh, the middle and end part of November, especially following that milder than normal October. Last year was one of the coldest Novembers on records, and retailers by and large plan their business this year based on sales from last year. Since it's going to be much warmer, they're going to have more inventory than, than they need. Therefore, there's going to be some amazing bargains as we move through the balance of November. Well, let's talk about November and December. We're talking about the holiday mm -hmm. shopping season. So will this kind of mild spell impact uh, shopping for the holidays? Uh, it certainly will. I think what's going to end up happening is that we're in the holiday season. As I mentioned before, seasonal apparel uh, uh, bargains are going to be everywhere. More than likely, though, guys, we'll probably see cooler temperatures or colder temperatures this year compared to last year. Again, remember, the comparison is really important. Last year was one of the warmest Decembers on record, so we may end up with a mild December, but more than likely it'll be colder than last year. That means demand for seasonal items will actually be up 
in December. So I guess the message there is to buy your jackets and coats in November before we get into December because you'll probably be needing them at least more than you did last year. And if we throw in a big winter storm, that, that's a whole nother level. Exactly, and, and the, the prediction for the winter that Tom just went through and you went through does not say we're not going to have snow. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be able to expect that. In fact, I guarantee we will in some of these big markets. And uh, Tom, uh, Paul, looking back at uh, what happened last year across New England and Boston, all that record snow there, people were searching for things like snow blowers, which were in very short supply as the winter rolled on. When's the best ideal time to purchase something like a snow blower? Mm -hmm. Uh, the sooner the better, Paul. And, and, you know, interestingly, what happens this time of year when you have those cooler than normal days, which we will have, that actually triggers demand for those items based on the memory of what happened last year. So we'll probably see actually stronger than normal sales, stronger than you would expect before it starts snowing, because we all remember, at least for most of those people here in the Northeast, how bad it was and how snowy it was last year. We don't want to get caught up. The same is true of boots as well. <laughs> so fascinating. Paul Walsh, our business weather expert. You just made us all a lot smarter. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, weather is tied into everything, everything. Yeah, especially how much money comes out of your wallet. Mm -hmm. Well, that system that ripped through the southern plains and the Gulf Coast now pushing across the southeast. At least six tornadoes now confirmed in Texas and now falling floodwaters reveal a huge mess to clean up. More details on that forecast next. Bridgestone's new drive guard tires are engineered to take a puncture and go up to 50 miles. We can drive 50 miles on a flat and you have an app that makes nails pop up? Yep. We could rule the world. <laughs> but I've got carpool at three, though, so oh, that time. we could, like, mess with the world. I tried Depend last weekend. It really made the difference between a morning around the house and getting a little exercise. Only Depend Underwear has new Confidence Core technology for fast absorption and the smooth, comfortable fit of FitFlex protection. Get a coupon at Depend.com. Allergies distracting you? When your symptoms start, doctors recommend taking Claritin every day of your allergy season. Claritin provides powerful, non-drowsy 24-hour relief for fewer interruptions from the amazing things you do every day. Live Claritin clear. Every stride, every start. Begin strong with the lasting energy of 100% whole grain Quaker Oats. And off you go. Today we're going to talk about trucks. Works for me. Which truck brand do you think offers best-in-class HD towing? Ford. I would say the Ram. Okay, let's move to the second door. Best V8 horsepower. The Ram. I say Ford on the V8. Chevy. What about this year's Motor Trend Truck of the Year? Chevy. What do you think? The Ford. Oh. The Ford? There's no reason why they shouldn't be. Let's see how you did. That's the oh. Chevy Silverado HD, the Chevy Silverado, and the Chevy Colorado. No way. Chevy, Chevy, Chevy. Wow. That's a clean sweep. It's more than the cloud. It's security and flexibility. It's where great ideas and vital data are stored. With CenturyLink, you get advanced technology solutions from a trusted IT partner, including cloud and hosting services, all backed by an industry-leading broadband network and people committed to helping you grow your business. You get a company that's more than just the sum of its parts. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. What's the word on weather underground? Drum roll. The weather geeks have weighed in and... Boom. They geekin' love it. Weather underground, my, my friend. Hopefully you learned something with that. I'm a weather geek for life. Join in on the fun. Weather underground. Geek nights at 6 on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 83 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. 
Here's our seven-day outlook. Closed captioning brought to you by Eggland's Best Eggs. There's only one egg that just tastes better, with more vitamins and less saturated fat. Only Eggland's Best. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. The South is getting slammed with heavy rain this morning, even a chance of severe weather in the Florida Panhandle. And yeah, the same system left a big mess in Texas. The National Weather Service confirms six tornadoes touched down to the Houston area on Saturday. The other part of the story in Texas, the flooding. Some places in eastern Texas and western Louisiana got up to a foot and a half of rain, and now the cleanup begins there, too. Thank you so much for staying with us on Weekend Recharge. I'm Maria La Rosa. And I'm Paul Goodlow. This is what we're following at half past the hour right now, and it is more rain. Take a live look right now at Bourbon Street in the Big Easy and uh, much of the southeast as well, getting more rain coming on through. And I got to say, these street sweepers, they've got a, uh, <laughs> a pretty tough job the night of the day after uh, Halloween. But we've caught them now twice. Twice. They so are they, are, they are on it. All right. So we've got a lot of big weather to talk about. Our top three stories really easy to pick out because they are all significant. So let's start with story number Number one, and we've got more rain across the south. I-10 corridor, I-20, 85, and 95, all socked in with rain, the possibility of severe storms. And it's not just going to be today, so we're going to time it out for you so you can get ready for what to expect for that, what likely will be a messy Monday morning drive. And the warm-up underway, that quick shot, it was out there, and now you're seeing temperatures continue to climb above average. We'll time that out. And this, the first significant wind, rain, and snow event here across the Pacific Northwest. High travel impact here as well. We'll take a look at how much snow and rain to see here. Paul? Well, that's great news out towards the West Coast, but here's what we know right now across parts of uh, the South. This, yeah, there have been six deaths in connection with the thunderstorms and heavy rain and flooding across Texas. Flash flood watches are still in effect for areas of Louisiana, uh, Southwest Alabama, even south Southeastern Mississippi. And the National Weather Service survey teams confirmed six tornadoes hit the greater Houston area on Saturday and more were reported in other parts of Texas, Louisiana and Mississippi. Dallas Fort Worth had its second wettest October on record and this is now the sixth wettest year on record there as well. Funny thing is that's also kind of bookended by some very long dry periods as well. So it's either been feast or famine across much of Texas. And right now that rain still seeing some in Texas, but also pushing across the southeast and Gulf Coast and even seeing some rain showers back into South Carolina and North Carolina right, right, right now. But we are not done in terms of the bulk of this rain. The moisture is still coming in here. Heavy rain still rolling across southern Louisiana. And there's that rain still rolling through the Houston area and across Galveston Bay. And not what you want to deal with after the flooding you dealt with almost 24 hours ago. So here's our forecast. The moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, I mean, this is just a conveyor belt of moisture feeding into more of the rain that will continue today as our lows starts to slide out of Texas. Behind that, we do expect some drier weather, at least for a little while, to settle in for the Lone Star State, but this will help feed up more moisture hour after hour, day after day as we head through today, also into tomorrow. Could even see some showers linger into early Tuesday morning, so let's put this in motion. This afternoon, we're really concerned with a heavy rain now across Louisiana and southern Mississippi. All that will be on its way into Alabama, into the Florida Panhandle, into areas of uh, Georgia, including you in Atlanta. We head on towards this evening, a big slug of moisture coming into northern Georgia and the upstate of South Carolina. And it continues, oh yeah, into your pre-dawn hours on Monday. Just as you get used to the time change and heading back to school and work, it's be a soggy Monday for you. Many areas could pick up three to five inches of rain and the uh, spots that could flood could flood easily with that type of rainfall. Of course, we do have the flood watches up, uh, including you in Baton Rouge and New Orleans because of the rain we're dealing with right now, Maria, and also the rain at, in the forecast as well. I love that you highlight what it will be like tomorrow morning for a lot of people, so that's where we'll pick it up here. You look at this map for tomorrow and you see all the places that will be picking up rain. So this is sort of the big picture. Now pick your spot on the map and I'm going to show you where, where Paul left off and time it out and see how else it's going to impact your Monday. So the Monday morning drive in Atlanta, I'm just 
just going to say it right now, is probably going to be an absolute mess. Birmingham, you may be seeing some of that lingering high water on there. And certainly as you head down towards Destin, Charlotte too, kind of messy. You've got the showers going on as the kids are getting on to the bus. Nine o'clock, you're still seeing the rain in Atlanta, Columbus, Georgia. But look how many hours, okay, even into the midday in the afternoon, you still have some showers moving through the 85 corridor. So from Charlotte to Atlanta to Athens and Columbia could be looking at a pretty uh, messy day, certainly even into the evening rush. And that's where we find around dinner time. Maybe it's at this point the kids' practices are canceled because the fields are a mess. Starting to see things quiet down a little bit from Mississippi into northwestern Alabama and the western half of Tennessee. For Atlanta, just plan on when you wake up, what you see is what you get. You got temps into the 60s with rain all day. Now, this certainly has been a wet weekend across the south. What can we expect next weekend? Yeah, we've got our eyes on it already. Dr. Greg Postel is in the lab with more on that. Maria, thank you very much. I think overall it's going to be quieter nationally, but there's still a chance for rain in the south. Look at the maps for next Saturday. This will be November 7th, basically a week from now. And we're seeing again more rain in the south. But I think the difference between next weekend's rain Rain, which might linger into Sunday as well, is that it's not going to be, I don't think, the extreme type of event that we've seen the last couple of days and should move through relatively quickly and an overall dry pattern uh, ensuing across much of the central part of the country. So the weather pattern next weekend will be substantively different than what we've got now. And one of the reasons why, one of the signals you can pick up is the forecast uh, data coming in from the jet stream. You run all the different simulations and you kind of get the same answer that there are no big ridges or troughs that I don't think are going to set up next weekend. For example, next Saturday, what we're looking at is uh, jet stream kind of moving through, wiggling their way through each one of those lines. is a different forecast of the jet stream, and they all kind of have that flat-ish west-to-east flow. Some wiggles, but not big ones. No big ridges or troughs. That means no giant storms, I don't think. And what we'll end up seeing more than anything else probably is some cooler temperatures settle into the south with, in addition to the rain, maybe that little dip in the jet stream in the east might help bring some cooler air. But overall, this is the temperature pattern to expect next weekend. But I don't think it's going to last very long. As I mentioned, with that sort of more west-to-east flow in the jet stream, it should push it out pretty quickly. And then as we head toward the middle of the month, we're going to revert back to this warmer temperature theme in the eastern two-thirds of the country with cooler temperatures in the west. That is going to be something to watch for the rest of the month. Maria and Paul, back to you. All right, thanks, Dr. Postel. Well, a foot of rain or more falling in parts of Texas over the last 48 hours. Yeah, leading to widespread flooding in homes and businesses. Are cleanups running into some problems? Well, before you call your insurance provider, we're going to talk about options you have. If you have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, isn't it time to let the real you shine through? Introducing Otesla, a Premolast. Otesla is not an injection or a cream. It's a pill that treats plaque psoriasis differently. Some people who took Otesla saw 75% clearer skin after four months. And Otesla's prescribing information has no requirement for routine lab monitoring. Don't take Otesla if you are allergic to any of its ingredients. Otesla may increase the risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Side effects may include diarrhea, nausea, upper respiratory tract infection, and headache. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Ask your doctor about Otesla today. Otesla. Show more of you. I don't want to live with the uncertainties of hep C. Or wonder whether I should seek treatment. I am ready. Because today, there's Harvoni, a revolutionary treatment for the most common type of chronic hepatitis C. Harvoni is proven to cure up to 99% of patients who've had no prior treatment. It's the one and only cure that's one pill once a day for 12 weeks. Certain patients can be cured with just eight weeks of Harvoni. With Harvoni, there's no interferon, and there are no complex regimens. Tell your doctor if you have other liver or kidney problems or other medical conditions, and about all the medicines you take, including herbal supplements. Harvoni should not be taken with any medicines containing amiodarone, rifampin, or St. John's wort. It also should not be taken with any other medicine that contains Sovaldi. Side effects may include tiredness and headache. I am ready to put Hep C behind me. I am ready to be cured. Are you ready? Ask your Hep C specialist if Harvoni is right for you.
Don't miss Ace's biggest ever buy two, get one free LED sale now through Sunday. Buy any two select LED bulbs and get one free. Mix and match from our best-selling, longest-lasting LED bulbs and get over 80% in energy savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Here's something new. Now you can get the Weather Channel forecast on the new L.L. Bean app. Just tap, shop, and discover. The new app from L.L. Bean, featuring forecasts from the Weather Channel. Download today. Currently in our area, 84 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east-southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. People across Central and East Texas will spend the next few days cleaning up from devastating floods. At least six deaths are connected to the weather since Friday. Houston emergency managers say 44 structures flooded there. That part of Texas was already saturated from the remnants of Hurricane Patricia. Remember that? Now, Paul, you have a look at some of those incredible rainfall totals. Yeah, this is just over the last seven days here. So let's take a look at the rainfall across much of the south uh, Texas and the southeastern states as well, Gulf Coast states. This area here in the hill country just north of San Antonio up towards San Marcos. Some areas there got over a foot of rain, but just really yesterday we saw a big swath of rain, say Houston into East Texas, also 12 to 18 inches of rain, also a widespread area here between 5 and 12 inches across almost the entire state of Louisiana, hence all the rain they were dealing with across that region. It was definitely uh, a, a lot of rain that we're dealing with uh, across much of the Gulf Coast states leading to a lot of problems. In fact, uh, plenty of people across Texas and much of the Gulf Coast states will be on the phone with their insurance adjusters first thing on Monday morning. Let's talk with uh, Lynn McChristen from the Insurance Information Institute. She joined us now from Tallahassee this morning. Thanks for joining us, Lynn. And we've seen also a lot of video of the last 24 hours of cars and trucks in high water, many stalled out and abandoned. Does the standard auto insurance policy cover flood damage for cars. Well, if you have comprehensive auto insurance, it does cover flood damage. So uh, one thing I want to point out is no one has to wait until Monday to call their insurance company. They are there 24 seven. They can call today so they can get things working and get recovery. But auto insurance, if you have comprehensive, which about 77% of drivers have it, you're covered for flood. Anything that people should be doing to their car, say they've managed to get it out of the floodwaters before calling their insurance company? Well, it's very dangerous to take a car that has been flooded and try to do much to it. It depends on how much water is in it. But if you can try to dry it out, uh, that's a good thing to do. Most of those cars will wind up being salvage vehicles because they won't be drivable. Water gets into the system and it's, it can't really be fixed. Now, from the cars to the homes, a typical homeowner's policy does not cover flood damage. Now, if you've got a separate flood protection for your house, that's great. So what happens if you do have that separate, uh, if you don't have that separate flood insurance? Well, if you don't have it, there may be state assistance available or there may be federal assistance available. But most of this money comes in the form of a grant or a loan. It is not designed to bring you back to the way you were before. So the only thing that does that is getting proper flood insurance. Okay, Lynn, the magic question is I'm watching at home. My house isn't flooded yet and hasn't yet. Do I need something like that? What makes that difference between the call of getting that extra coverage? Well, you know, there, the rain comes without warning. You really need to think about flood insurance if it rains where you are. And most people in Texas and the Southeast know about that. You can call your insurance company or the National Flood Insurance Program to get that coverage, but it won't be automatic. Yeah. It usually takes 30 days before it takes effect. 
good, good to know. Another quick question, just, just price-wise, what's what's the typical price? I hear, I haven't looked myself, but I hear it's a little pricey to get flood insurance. Well, if you live in a low to moderate risk zone, the flood insurance costs maybe $430 a year, which is a good price to pay because it does flood in low to moderate risk zones. But the other prices are based on how close you are to the coast or rivers. So it does change and you can find out exactly how much it would cost you by going to floodsmart.gov. Plug in your zip code, it will tell you the price and you can find that out today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Lynn McChristian, I can't thank you enough. The Insurance Information Institute, appreciate it, because there's nothing more high anxiety than having that issue and not knowing what to do or where to go. And we've showed it here. I mean, we, we were starting to see places flood that haven't flooded, mm -hmm. didn't flood it in centuries. So it's definitely something you might want to check into. In fact, as she said, you can actually check mm -hmm. your costs right. and also your risk if you go to uh, floodsmart.gov Flood and just simply enter your address and zip code. There you go. We highly recommend. Well, a cargo ship that went missing in a hurricane a month ago today may have been located 15,000 wow. feet below. Coming up, how wreckage from the El Faro may have been found and what crews will use to confirm that find. Next. Andrew, Rita, Sandy, meet Chris, Jackie, Joe, minor damage or major disaster, when you need us most, we're there, State Farm, we're a force of nature too. They try to put us in a box. They try to categorize us the same. We gotta dress like this, we gotta talk like that. But we say no more. Spirit, use your wings to Tonight we change things. Freedom. Freedom. What makes Thermacare different? Two words, it heals. How? With heat. Unlike creams and rubs that mask the pain, Thermacare has patented heat cells that penetrate deep to increase circulation and accelerate healing. Let's review. Heat plus relief plus healing equals Thermacare. The proof that it heals is you. Here's something new. Now you can get the Weather Channel forecast on the new L.L. Bean app. Just tap, shop, and discover. The new app from L.L. Bean featuring forecasts from the Weather Channel. Download today. I don't know what that was. It felt huge. Don't move, man. Great time for a shiny floor wax, no? Not if you just put the finishing touches on your latest masterpiece. Timing's important. Comcast Business knows that. That's why you can schedule an installation at a time that works for you, even late at night or on the weekend if that's what you need, because you have enough to worry about. I did not see that coming. Don't deal with disruptions. Get better internet installed on your schedule. Comcast Business, built for business. You know me as Noda Begay III, golf analyst for NBC Sports and Golf Channels and founder of the MB3 Foundation. But my favorite title is Champion for Kids Health. I'm living my dream and I wanna make that possible for all children. We must give kids what they need to become teachers, artists, doctors, even golfers. But dreams can get lost if our kids aren't healthy. And right now in our country, one in three kids are obese. We must do better. Join me, help all kids live healthy now so they can build healthy futures. LeafFact.com. Currently in our area, 84 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook.
just about 11 minutes for the top of the hour. Time for your tropical update. We start with the big picture close to home. The eastern Pacific is fairly quiet, tropical wise, and so is the Atlantic and the Caribbean. Uh, right now, we're just looking at the general showers and thunderstorms, but things are pretty interesting in the Arabian Sea, and you see why this cyclone, very powerful cyclone, Chapala, right now max winds at 120 miles per hour. You see a very well-defined storm, very symmetrical. That's showing that's the power of a very well-defined storm. Forecasts continue to take it into Yemen here over the next 24 hours or so. Notice the forecast intensity taking it down a notch, but still could be a very strong category one equivalent cyclone when it makes landfall, Paul. I want to update you now on uh, this. The wreckage of a cargo ship which went missing during Hurricane Joaquin may have been found. Sonar equipment on a Navy ship detected what are believed to be images of the El Faro yesterday afternoon near its last known position. A remotely operated vehicle will be sent down to survey the wreckage. The El Faro was headed to Puerto Rico from Jacksonville, Florida, when it lost contact in the hurricane just one month ago. All right, let's take you back to then and what the conditions were like at the time. And you see that uh, Joaquin reached peak strength as a category form storm. It had winds of 155 miles per hour. And you look at the location of the ship and you can imagine the rough seas and the winds and what they must have been like at that point. And when the first set sail, this was still not a Category 4 hurricane at that point. Right. It was a far weaker hurricane, but rapidly intensified as that ship moved in its path. Let's move forward now and take a look at some beautiful colors from Plymouth, New Hampshire on the campus of Plymouth State University, just north of Concord. <laughs> and I was just up there last week. Yes. It is still a, a lot of peak color out there. Mm -hmm. If you can go, go. It is gorgeous. This uh, part of the country is is stunning any time of year, right? But there's something magical about that fall, and then it's going to transition into the winter. and really looks like a quintessential New England town. But yeah, we are getting pretty close to that past peak there in uh, that part of the world. But you still have some pretty nice color from Connecticut uh, down 95 to New York. Yeah, it depends on what happened with the uh, couple, last couple of rain and wind storms mm -hmm. the last, uh, say, week to 10 days, though. <sighs> but I still think it's a gorgeous time to go. And a little farther south, boom, take a look <laughs> at the golds and ambers here in Brockport, New York. And you've got also in Trumansburg, New York, some beautiful color as well. Some lovely shots Ooh. there. Look at that. The color in every way is just beautiful. Yeah, you've got the waterfall there in the background right in the middle of that gorgeous. And across the southeast, we're just starting to see some of the colors now, mm -hmm. some of the oaks and maples, some of the the first ones to turn color mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to be peaking here over the next couple of weeks so if you are heading down south enjoy the colors. It does look nice but we are getting a little bit of mother nature's pruning here with the heavy rain headed across the southeast. We'll have more on that coming up. When a moment spontaneously turns romantic why pause to take a pill? And why stop what you're doing to find a bathroom? Cialis for daily use is the only daily tablet approved to treat erectile dysfunction, so you can be ready anytime the moment is right. Plus, Cialis treats the frustrating urinary symptoms of BPH, like needing to go frequently, day or night. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medicines and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, or any symptoms of an allergic reaction, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Ask your doctor about Cialis for daily use. Insurance coverage has expanded nationally and you may now be covered. Contact your health plan for the latest information. You do all this research on the perfect car, gas mileage, horsepower, torque ratios. Three spreadsheets later, you finally bring home the one, then smash it into a tree. Your insurance company is all too happy to raise your rates. Maybe you should have done a little more research on them. For drivers with accident forgiveness, Liberty Mutual won't raise your rates due to your first accident. See car insurance in a whole new light. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Welcome to the sleep revolution. All new Emergen Z, a natural way to power down with melatonin plus vitamin C and other antioxidants to work their magic while you sleep. Don't just sleep, revitalize. New Emergen Z, power down to power up.
This kid makes stains like crazy. So we got our new HE washing machine, but it took forever. Turns out it wasn't the machine, it was our detergent. So we switched to Tide Turbo Clean. Now we get way cleaner clothes, way faster. <laughs> HE Turbo Clean. Six times the cleaning power in half the time. Don't miss Ace's biggest ever buy two, get one free LED sale now through Sunday. Buy any two select LED bulbs and get one free. Mix and match from our best-selling, longest-lasting LED bulbs and get over 80% in energy savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. How to make an awesome weather science show. Take three scientists. That's us. The scientists. Yeah. They know that. Add the forces of nature. Stuff. Mix in some crazy experiments. Lit my hand on fire. Why? Because of science. Oh, that is so cool. And then... Go! Who said science isn't fun? Three scientists walk into a bar. Bottoms up Sunday nights at 10 on the Weather Channel. And join the community now on Facebook.com slash three scientists. Six minutes for the top of the hour. What a shot. Look at this. Looking right at down at uh, Fifth Avenue in New York City. The world's largest marathon happening now. 50,000 runners winding through the city's five boroughs, including my beautiful, amazing cousin Trish, yeah. who's running her first New York marathon. Mwah! Good luck to everybody. My first New York City marathon has never occurred. <laughs> Well, I run when chased, so I probably won't be doing the marathon anytime soon. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> but everyone who does it, amazing. And uh, from what I understand, it's actually perfect running conditions because you have, you know, steady temperatures into the upper 50s, lower 60s, cloudy skies, nothing that's really going to hold you back, you know, like wind or anything like that. My lack of desire to run 26 <laughs> miles is holding me back. Stop. That point two, I can do the point two. Yeah. 26.2? Is that what it is? 26.2, yeah, yeah. I can do the point two. The 26, <sighs> that's, that's the problem. All right, we're taking a look at the uh, the route. We do have some you know breezy conditions, 10 to 15 um, out of the south. So uh, in that regard, you know, you're pretty good shape. You don't have much in the way of precip chances, so that's always a good thing for fans as well. We'll keep an eye uh, here, mile marker one, the start in Staten Island with that crosswind across the Verrazano. That's always a tough one, right? That kind of gets you, gets you pushing, gets you motivated as we wind our way through through the five boroughs. Uh, we stop at mile marker eight and we keep on going. Uh, we move through into Queens where it looks like that south wind may be a tailwind. Love that. Yeah, it's pretty good until you head up towards the island and then make that turn around in uh, the Bronx and then guess what? You head back into the tail, into the headwind as you head into Central Park. So uh, if you're hitting the wall, guess what? The wind's going to be there to really make that wall even higher. But to have that finish in beautiful Central Park, that's that's why they put it there. So I get will you never through. know that feeling. <laughs> you can, you'll walk there, right? I got, point, I got the point two. The last point <laughs> two, first 26, yeah. is perfectly good vehicles to take you 26 miles. It's true, it's, it's true. But good luck, everybody. You can check on them. You can worry about them. You can even choose a car for them. Honey, are you okay? I'm okay. Love. We're okay. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Ancestry has come out with a new version. Now they have Life Story. It literally lays out somebody's life from birth to death. When I was using Life Story, I discovered my great-grandmother. She went through a lot. Two sons go to fight in World War II. She lived through the Depression, and she made it through all of that. Here I am, just because she survived and she kept going. Bring your family story to life like never before. Get started for free at Ancestry.com. This way. I ordered this online? Yeah, let me have a look. Thanks. Hey guys. Oh, hey, love me. Nice, right? Yeah. Buy now online or through our mobile app and pick up in store. Have a birthday, honey! Because every day is an opportunity to make your day better. Walmart. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under partly cloudy skies.
today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. It was a lot of wind, and we heard almost sound like a train coming through here. Tornadoes, deadly flash floods, and torrential downpours. The storms that hit Texas are moving east. We're tracking how the storms will impact your plans today and into the work week. And a story breaking from the Caribbean. The U.S. Navy may have found the wreckage of a cargo ship that went missing during last month's Hurricane Joaquin. We will tell you what they did to find the ship. And today, the first day of November. But don't put away those short sleeves just yet. We're going to show you how much of the country could see a fall warm-up this week. That and much more coming up right now on Weekend Recharge. Welcome into Weekend Recharge. If you've properly turned your clocks back, it's 10 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm Marie LaRosa. You're either on time or oh, super early. Super early. <laughs> <laughs> You're joining us on Paula Goodlow. We're going to start, though. Yeah, time change or not, it is definitely a wet Sunday morning all across the southeast. Just a live look at New Orleans on the left. They're cleaning up Bourbon Street here after a busy Halloween night. And on the right, Atlanta, seeing some clouds out there already. Many areas picking up over a half inch of rain, and there's far more of that to come, Maria. It's certainly one of the big stories that we want to cover for you for today in our snapshot. And it may all mean a nasty Monday morning drive for a lot of people. And that includes into the Pacific Northwest. Look what's unfolding today. Day, really starting first big significant wind rain and yes even snow event here it's going to be impacting travel I'll time that out for you and of course looking at all of the rain still plaguing parts of the south that's on the move we do have a threat for severe weather so we'll take a look at that as well and how that'll play out for your Monday Otherwise, it's the big heat up here. Look at this, uh, 15 to 20 degrees above average for a good chunk of the country. We'll let you know how warm that'll get and I guess exactly how long it will last now that we're into November. Paul? Now, the big story we're watching is what's happened across the Texas and the Gulf Coast states over the last 48 hours. And so, in fact, not just that, take a look at the rainfall over the last seven days. So last week, since last weekend, we also had some heavy rain. That ended, we had a new round. Many areas of the hill country between 5 and 12 inches of rain there. And just yesterday, huge Houston into East Texas, again, about three to eight to 10 inches of rain there. Much of Louisiana, we're talking over a half foot to a foot of rain, and this rain is on the move as it moves across the Gulf Coast states into the southeast as well, all courtesy of this system coming on through, feeding on just copious amounts of moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. And this is just not low level moisture. This thing goes up over 10, 15,000 feet. So it's a ton of moisture coming in here, and the atmosphere is just wringing that out and dumping it as rain. Right now we're seeing some scattered showers around Atlanta metro area, but more rain, Birmingham, and then down towards the Mobile area, on towards Gulfport and Biloxi and New Orleans, all seeing some rain, and we'll see more rain as we head throughout this morning as well. So even areas just west of here as well also deal with more rain. Lake Charles dry now, but more rain coming through Houston and Galveston, coming back into Beaumont and Orange and Port Arthur, heading across the river and into Louisiana as well. So look at this plume of moisture here we have in the atmosphere, which continues to, good news is, slowly move out of Texas, but also still move across Louisiana into Mississippi, Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, and some of that getting into Georgia, even the Carolinas as we head throughout today into tomorrow could even linger into Tuesday as well. So let's put our forecast in motion here as we head throughout the rest of this morning. We'll see the rain showers heavy at time roll across lower Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. So that also getting into parts of northern Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina as we head on towards uh, tomorrow as well. So talking about tomorrow morning, more heavy rain coming through the area into the midday hours as well. And we're slowly clearing out once we head across the Mississippi as we head not until perhaps late tomorrow night, even into early Tuesday 
Thursday morning. The rain shower is still pushing on through uh, Augusta and into parts of Columbia, South Carolina, where you don't need any more rain. Myrtle Beach, even Wrightsville Beach, and even Charlotte seeing some rain showers to start your Tuesday off as well. So this is not just a one-day rain event. This is a multiple-day day rain event here leading into your Monday, even in Tuesday. So some areas picking up three to five inches of rain across the region as we head over the next, uh, say, 72 hours. And because of that, we have a concern of more flooding. Flash flood watches have been issued. Maria? All right, Paul, thank you. You know, outdoor activities across the south, that's going to be a bit of a washout. Looks like some heavy rain in areas that will carry over to the Monday morning rush. We want to talk to Steve Nelson at the National Weather Service office just outside Atlanta, Peachtree City. Steve, thank you so much for taking time with us. Kind of set the stage for us, you know, with the rain that has previously fallen in and around Atlanta. What do you think that could mean for any flash flood threats? Well, you're right. We did have some rain early this morning. and In fact, Atlanta picked out about just over a half inch quickly after midnight for a three-hour period. Uh, that's going to set the stage for uh, runoff and potential flooding uh, all over North Georgia here uh, later this afternoon and tonight. And Steve, we know we had some severe weather across parts of Texas, Louisiana uh, yesterday into this morning. What about that? Is there potential for severe weather thunderstorms across areas of uh, northern Georgia? Yeah, we're looking at that. The threat for that for today, with all the clouds and cooler temperatures, we're, we're going to be, we think, okay for today and uh, most of the night. Now, when we get towards morning and uh, during the day on Monday, we're starting to get a little concerned with the ingredients for severe weather coming together, damaging winds, uh, possibly even a weak tornado or two. You know, and timing is everything, certainly when you're talking about a city like Atlanta, where you have, you know, a big commuting city here, and the time for some of that heavy rain is about then. Um, any concerns you have with the road conditions? Yeah, I, I think the rain, you know, will have definitely been going all night long, and it very will likely be continuing uh, Monday morning at Rush. Uh, hopefully some of the heaviest rain will have moved off by then and, you know, getting ready for the next round of thunderstorms. But... You never can now know exactly when that, that round could hit. It could hit right at rush hour if things come together right. All right, Steve Nelson with the National Weather Service out of Peachtree uh, City, Georgia. Thank you so much, Steve. Well, let's talk about what we know right now from this system. Already there have been between uh, there have been actually six deaths in connection with these storms as they rolled across areas of Texas. And the Houston Fire Department says it has responded to more than 130 water rescues this Saturday alone. The Mississippi Emergency Management Agency says they've received initial reports from four counties, including damage to a dozen homes and multiple businesses, a high rip current risk is in effect through this evening for Alabama and Northwest Florida beaches. Well, it looks like the weather's not going to, you know, make anyone run to the beach. That's good news there. Speaking right. of Texas, take a look at this video out of Brownsville. That's a barn. You watch close, closely. It was lifted then destroyed here in the middle of a storm that rolled through this area of Texas. Isn't that amazing? This was in Los Coyotes, Texas, early Friday morning and shared to us by the National Weather Service office in Brownsville. Now as for the rain, more than five inches of rain falling there in just two hour span there during the day on Friday. Wow. wow. Speaking of wild weather, you want to grab perhaps a bag of wild weather in the Pacific Northwest. We're talking everything from flooding rain to wind to even snow in the mountains. We're going to talk all about those impacts. And yeah, it's going to have a, a, an impact on those passes, those mountain passes with the amount of snow that they're looking at. So we'll take a closer look at that coming up. It's more than a network and the cloud. It's reliable uptime and multi-layered security. It's how you stay connected to each other and to your customers. With CenturyLink, you get advanced technology solutions, including an industry-leading broadband network and cloud and hosting services, all with dedicated, responsive support. With CenturyLink as your trusted technology partner, you're free to focus on growing your business. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. It's Olive Garden's 20th anniversary of Never Ending Possible. So we're celebrating by offering you over 20 delicious choices starting at $9.99. Like creamy new pesto Alfredo or crispy chicken Frida. Plus unlimited salad and breadsticks for a limited time at Olive Garden. Don't miss Ace's biggest ever buy two, get one free LED sale now through Sunday. Buy any two select LED bulbs and get one free. Mix and match from our best-selling, longest-lasting LED bulbs and get over 80% in energy savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Here's something new. Now you can get the Weather Channel forecast on the new L.L. Bean app. Just tap, shop, and discover. 
a new app from L.L. Bean featuring forecasts from the Weather Channel. Download today. I did it. I joined eHarmony. Yeah, yeah, I can get my own dates. How's that going? Oh! 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 Yeah! Sign me up. Stop waiting. Start communicating for free today. Weekdays on AMHQ. I want to make sure everybody can get an idea of what's happening here. Let's talk about that. Let's lift the face of this. You're about to see something you have never seen on television before. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. I'm Mike Bettis. That's Sarah. Hi. Welcome to the set of a brand new show, Weather Underground. There'll be experts, bloggers, the smartest weather minds in the business on every screen you have 24 hours a day. Geeking out on what's happening in weather, how it happens, and why it's so freaking cool. Weather Underground, weeknights at 6 on the Weather Channel. Welcome back to Weekend Recharge. Your clocks have changed, so has the calendar. It is now November, and we're on pace for a pretty warm start to this uh, month here. Right now, we're seeing some cooler air, not cold, but cool air across the Northeast. Keep our temperatures at or maybe slightly above average, but later on this week, we're seeing a big ridge of high pressure nose in here, already feeling the warmth across the upper Midwest and Plains. Thanks to high pressure, clockwise flow, not only bringing in the Gulf of Mexico moisture, getting, feeding that rain here, but also giving you south and southwesterly winds. And that always is a warm wind any time of the year in this part of the country. Take a look at the numbers. Today alone, we're running 10, 15, almost 20 degrees above average. We should be in the 40s this time of the year in 50s. We got the 60s, upper 60s. We got mid 70s across the region. But we'll also push this warmth a little farther east through the Great Lakes as we head on towards your Monday, pushing to 75 in Des Moines, even into Tuesday, Chicago. 71 degrees, Indianapolis 74 degrees, St. Louis 77 degrees. That is some 16 degrees above average. And yes, we're talking about some records as well. Wednesday, Chicago, the record is 74. Our forecast is 73 degrees. We're also going to spread this warmth across the Northeast as well. We're going to see plenty of 60s, even some 70s as we head into uh, the beginning of this week as well. So not feeling like fall there at all. I mean, so far from a scene yeah. like this, but you know this will be around the bend just shortly, right? And while we can't tell you exactly when all that rain, snow, and that freezing rain and the temperatures will be arriving, we can tell you what you might expect. Our winter weather uh, expert, Tom Niz takes a look. Hey, winter's right around the corner, and this year El Nino is going to be a major player in the winter weather. Let's look at five things that we know about this winter. The first is our temperature outlook. Temperatures are likely going to be above normal all the way from the western U.S. across the northern U.S. and below normal for the south central part of the nation and the southeast. Number two, precipitation outlook goes for likely above normal precipitation again across most of the south, and that works its way up the mid-Atlantic seaboard all the way to parts of southern New England. California's in this as well. On the dry side, most of the northern U.S. from the Pacific Northwest right through the Great Lakes likely to be below normal. On to number three. For number three, we're going to deal with California's drought. They've been under exceptional drought conditions for a long time. But this year, under an El Nino, and in particular, a strong El Nino, we've got good news. Our strongest El Ninos in 82 and 83, 97, 98, are averaged together. And in those years, we got as much as double the precipitation across California that we normally get. So that is good news for you. On to number four. On number four, there's a number of large-scale players, and we already talk about El Nino really being the biggest player, but there's some other features we need to look at. The first is all of this warm water sitting in the northeastern Pacific Ocean and off the coast of California. We don't know what that is going to do right now, so that is a big question mark and how that might influence the weather 
at different points through the winter. Our second player is all the way over into the Atlantic Basin. In the North Atlantic here, we have a feature that we refer to as NAO, or the North Atlantic Oscillation. That index talks about atmospheric pressure here between Iceland and the Azores, and it can have a big influence on the jet stream pattern across northeastern uh, United States during the winter. So that is another question mark as to how that may influence the winter at times. And that takes us to point number five. We look at the seasonal averages, but in any season, we can get extremes of one side or the other. And boy, I'll tell you what, when we look at our two strongest El Nino years, 82, 83, and 97, 98, Mother Nature threw us a couple of big events, especially in the Northeastern US. In February of 1983, we had the President's Day snowstorm, which produced over two feet of snow from Washington, DC, all the way up through Boston, Mass. And in January of 1998, we had one of the greatest ice storms on record. Three to five inches of ice accumulated in parts of northern New England, northern New York, and southeastern Canada. So the cards have been dealt for the season. We don't know what Mother Nature is holding here and how she's going to play them out. So please keep up your guard. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tom. We're going to keep you up to date on really what is good, the Northwest's first bout of winter weather, and it looks like a good dose of it, too. Love this uh, radar picture out of Seattle, right? Because Seattle's 50, mostly cloudy, but you've got a lot of rain, and then it gets to those higher elevations, say 4,000 feet at this point, and it's turning to snow. You've got the Olympic Mountains, too, socked in with snow, and some of this will be coming down so heavily that uh, travel's definitely going to be impacted. You know, I-90, one of those big routes uh, across the Cascades and so some of those passes those mountain passes are gonna be pretty tough so heads up there it's not just today or tonight that we're gonna see a radar looking a lot like this it's even on into tomorrow the setup is there of course we have this amazing onshore flow basically this atmospheric river all this moisture the only thing getting in the way is land the West Coast uh, the coastal range the Olympic Mountains and the Cascades picking up a pretty good amount of snow maybe on the order of two plus feet as far as the rain it could be two or three inches Plus, along with that, all that wind, that's today and tonight. Some of that on the heavy side and even through tomorrow, Paul. So heads up from Seattle to Portland down into Northern California. Well, next on Weekend Recharge, we're tracking heavy rain across the south this morning. There's even a chance that a thunderstorm could go severe and could be popping up as we head into your Monday morning commute. Stick around for that forecast. Bridgestone is changing the game in tire performance. So will our neck and get to the store when he's out of diapers. Well, to be clear, they're not for me. For my son. So. <laughs> we should probably go. We switched Will's tires to Bridgestone's revolutionary drive guard tires. Oh, those look sharp. It's okay. Our drive guard tires are engineered to take a puncture and drive up to 50 miles on a flat. So, no side of the road. Well, that's good because the side of the road is dangerous, especially since we're going commando. We're? What commando means? La, 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 la. Tonight, we come to let loose. They try to put us in a box. They try to categorize us the same. We got to dress like this. We got to talk like that. But we say no more. Spirit, use your wings. Tonight we change things. Freedom. Freedom. Lowe's presents How to Be Good at Math. How much money do you think we saved today? A lot. Now get 10% off major appliances, $3.96 and more. Tonight, two undefeated teams, two future Hall of Fame quarterbacks, and only one will remain unbeaten. Two of the NFL's best square off in the biggest game of the season. Packers, Broncos. Tonight, only on it. Life's busy but you can stay connected to family and friends with Xfinity Voice. Create up to four additional phone numbers to enjoy unlimited nationwide talk and text anywhere you go. Plus, with features like readable voicemail and caller ID across your smartphone, tablet, even TV, you'll never miss an important message. Life's busy, and the old phone company can't keep up. So switch and save with Xfinity Voice. Just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Call or go online today. So, you know, I am Consumer Cellular's number one fan. And I'm betting he's just one of millions. Oh. Nobody loves saving money as much as we do. You gotta love that plans start at just $10 a month. Without contracts. 
it's really easy to switch. You can even keep your number. And AARP members get special discounts. It's all about the fantastic customer service. And a great choice of phones. Maybe people do love consumer cellular as much as I do. Told you. Call, go online, or visit a Target or Sears store today. Come. Currently in our area, 84 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Just like the wind was going to blow you over. I mean, the winds have been nuts. You can really see just how rough this surf is and how nasty, too. That is an angry ocean right there. Great example of how you don't know what's under the road. Either they yeah. drove off the road or part of the road gave out. Were you frightened? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I was. Not does that sum up the week, but isn't that really fall, that transition where you get severe weather, you know, even tornadoes and then snow. And we might have a repeat this week as well. Mm -hmm. So time now for our seven day stretch. Will it get you into the next seven days weather wise because we have a lot of stuff going on. And again, today, November 1st, so a whole different month we're dealing with as well as a perhaps a different time. Exactly. Set yeah. Your clocks back. Yeah. And isn't it amazing? One more month of meteorological fall. You can spin it that way. Right. All right, so we've got a lot on the map, Paul, and a lot of it is that a lot of moisture, available moisture, and that severe weather threat across the south. Yeah, that's the red here, and also plenty of rain. We don't have just severe weather, but also a flash flood threat from the uh, Gulf Coast states into areas of the southeast, because we'll still see this rainfall as we head towards Monday, even Tuesday. We'll show you that coming up, but also, just look at the numbers here. Yeah. This is November 1st. Chicago, you will take that and run, but guess <laughs> what, Chicago? It gets warmer as we head through this week. And talk about taking and running. You got the New York City Marathon right now. Just cloudy skies, a brisk south wind, but uh, looking good temperature wise into the 60s. Monday, though, you got to say, a lot of the, the big attention would be going to the west. I mean, it's good rain, a lot of snow. It's the Sierra Nevada Mountains, it's up into the Cascades. And, and Northern California. It's also right on time. November, typically, when we start seeing the rain in California. In fact, take a live look at San Francisco. Some clouds out there right now. But, yeah, this will be a different scene as we head just uh, 24, even 48 hours from now. As you have that rain coming right on down the coast and eventually into the Bay Area and giving you that rain <laughs> on time. And, yes, this is El Nino year. A lot of talk about this. We need the rain and the snow also across the Sierra. And both will happen as we head through this week. And then look at what happens on Tuesday. Tuesday. That's big Pacific storm begins a big snow producer. And this is really the first a good size one for the season. And you have it from western Montana, the Bitterroots, the Rockies, the Tetons into the Wasatch. All of the big mountain ranges there are going to get a little dose. And all the valleys in between, including Yellowstone, some snow possible in Yellowstone National Park. Here's a live look at 
Old Faithful, where you can still, I think they just, uh, I think it's drivable, but I know once they close the park, mm. uh, certain things are accessible. I, I do believe uh, the geyser basin there is advisable, but the rest of the park is not right now on the radar. Snow is coming down here. I gotta tell you, West Yellowstone, it is one of the coldest <laughs> places in the winter because that cold air just drains down through that valley. And uh, not to mention, it's picturesque with all the animals. See the bison yeah. covered with all the snow and the ice. Yeah. It's a beautiful part of the world any time of the year. But you also have to prepare for the ugly side too, the travel. I-80, I-90, all of those big interstates going to be seeing that uh, nasty driving conditions. And then we have on Wednesday in through the Colorado Rockies, more rain for parts of the southwest too. But also east of there, we're talking about that warm up here in November. Look at this, Chicago still in the 70s. You'll be there Tuesday and Wednesday, and we're pushing the upper 60s in New York City. And the rain shower is still keeping a little cooler here across the southeast, 67 as you head on towards Atlanta. And we got a nice stretch of mid and upper 80s in through Miami. You're at 85 on Thursday, but here we go with our next system that we're watching. And you know, you always have to be a little cautious here when you're talking about more rain in Texas, and that will be on the move too. Yeah, keep an eye on that, but also with these southern storms, which are more prevalent with El Nino, we have the cold air dumping in. This is the perfect scenario for the mile high city to start seeing some snows. And again, the early season, late season, when you typically see your biggest snows, El Nino, an active southern branch, you can see big storms throughout the winter. So definitely keep that in the back of your mind if you have plans across mm -hmm. the front range as we head through the next, uh, say, three or four months. All right, so we're wrapping up a first full week of November. It's more rain across the south and southeast. We're starting to see that inch back up into the northeast, but I gotta tell you, 71 in New York in November, not too shabby. Yeah, bonus weather there for sure. Yeah. A little dry weather in Atlanta, and then the rain comes in throughout the day, 74 there. Let's move into next weekend, and the rain showers still plaguing much of the southeast, stretching back to Texas. And the big cool down too, right? Highs back in the 40s in the Midwest. Well, the system that ripped through the southern plains and the Gulf Coast, it's pushing into the southeast. Yeah, and right now we're talking about the risk of severe weather. Already six confirmed tornadoes in Texas, the Houston area alone yesterday. Now floodwaters are revealing a huge mess to clean up. More details coming up. The manpower. The will. Mobilizing to take on the world? You don't know ARP. AARP and AARP Foundation are taking on hunger with 31 million meals donated. Drive to End Hunger teams with local agencies to reach the hungriest among us. If you don't think ending hunger when you think AARP, then you don't know ARP. Find more surprising possibilities and get to know us at aarp.org slash possibilities. Here's something new. Now you can get the Weather Channel forecast on the new L.L. Bean app. Just tap, shop, and discover. The new app from L.L. Bean, featuring forecasts from the Weather Channel. Download today. We're a marketing research company, so I need to collect your phone so you can't post pictures. Okay. How does it feel to not be connected? My chest hurts. Well, let me give your phones back. <laughs> let me show you a better way to keep connected. The 2016 oh. Chevy Cruze offers built-in 4G LTE Wi-Fi that connects up to seven devices. So this thing puts out its own signal? Yes. This is next level Chevy. All right, now that we have merged with Cable World, we are so excited to hear your big ideas and how we're going to take on DirecTV. So over to you. Thank you. Full disclosure, we forgot to come up with ideas. Yeah, I mean, we got messed up last night. You're lucky we're even here. But we did bring breakfast. Bagels? Nope. Oh, my goodness. Peel and eat shrimp. Not how I would have gone, but uh, it's good. It's innovative, and that's what we want here. Get rid of cable and switch to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. After 50 years of designing cars for crash survival, Subaru has developed our most revolutionary feature yet. A car that can see trouble and stop itself to avoid it. When the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety tested front crash prevention, nobody beat Subaru models with eyesight. Not Honda, not Ford, or any other brand. Subaru eyesight, an extra set of eyes every time you drive. What's the word on weather underground? Drum roll. The weather geeks have weighed in and... Boom. They geekin' love it. Weather underground, oh my friend. Hopefully you learned something with that. I'm a weather geek for life. Join in on the fun. Weather underground. Geek nights at 6 on the Weather Channel.
currently in our area, 84 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. Closed captioning brought to you by Eggland's Best Eggs. There's only one egg that just tastes better with more vitamins and 25% less saturated fat. Only Eggland's Best. Better taste, better nutrition, better eggs. The South is getting slammed with heavy rain this morning, even a chance of severe weather in the Florida Panhandle. The same system left a big mess in Texas. The National Weather Service confirms six tornadoes touched down in the Houston area alone on Saturday. The other part of the story in Texas, the flooding. Some places in eastern Texas and western Louisiana got up to a foot and a half of rain. And then all of that cleanup. Thank you so much for staying with us on the Weekend Recharge. It's halftime. I'm Marie LaRosa. And I'm Paul Goodlow. That is what we're following right now at half past the hour. And yeah, we have a lot of rain we're dealing with and the potential for more rain as well as a warm up. And yes, finally, we could see some rain and snow. We desperately need it, and that's yes. out towards the West Coast. But right now, we want to start with a live look at the Big Easy Bourbon Street after a ruckus Saturday <laughs> night because it's Halloween. Uh, things a little quiet this morning, perhaps a few pounding headaches, and a lot of people saying, thank God I have an extra hour this morning. Right. But, uh, Maria, this rain is just uh, one of the systems we're following. I'll, I'll say, too, it's cleaner, right? We saw those uh, sweepers come through twice now during the show, and it looks like uh, they're doing a good job. All right, top three stories, obviously, having a lot to do with a lot of moisture, and that includes across the south with our big system on the move. We still see, though, it plaguing parts of the south and the southeast, along with our severe threat. So we're going to time all of this out for you because timing is everything, and for a lot of us, it, it's going to mean a messy, messy morning drive. In the meantime, though, the temperature story across the Midwest, you got to be loving that, well above average, and that's going to be the trend into this week. We'll take a look at that. And a new Pacific Northwest storm slamming into Washington, Oregon, eventually bringing a good amount of snow to places like the Rockies. We'll look at that as well. Paul? All right now, let's take a look at what we know right now on the storms that slammed Texas in the south here. There have been six deaths in connection with the storms in Texas. Flash flood watches are in effect now for portions of Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. And the National Weather Service survey teams confirm a half dozen tornadoes around Houston and even more reported in Louisiana and Mississippi. Dallas-Fort Worth had its second wettest October on record, and this is now the sixth wettest year on record there total. And they're still above average for rainfall, and we still have two more months to go. Let's talk more about the Southern Soaker. Still seeing some rain in Texas, but the bulk of it, though, still rolling across the Gulf Coast into areas of Mississippi, Alabama, and some of that also here into Georgia, and a few uh, rumbles of thunder now around the Albany area. And even seeing rain pushing into the South and North Carolina region as well. The heaviest rain still right here along the immediate Gulf Coast, heading on towards Biloxi and Gulfport and Mobile and New Orleans. And yes, there's still some rain here, slowly trying to push out of the Houston area and Galveston, but unfortunately is heading into East Texas, where many areas there picked up more than a half a foot to a foot of rain just yesterday. So the setup here, Gulf of Mexico moisture, it is open and we're talking a deep plume of moisture coming in here across the southeast is feeding hour after hour of potential rain and flooding rain as well. Our upper level low finally pushes out of Texas, starts to dry you out, but also helps feeding more energy into the system and feeding more rain, not only here across the Gulf Coast states, but into the southeast, into the Carolinas as we head into tomorrow, also into Tuesday as well. So this will be a multi-day event here as it pushes on 
on towards the east. So let's put this in motion as we head towards this afternoon. More showers, a few thunderstorms rolling across lower Alabama, the Florida Panhandle pushing on towards Atlanta as we head on towards tonight. Maybe a brief break in that, but more rain showers coming in in the pre-dawn hours of your Monday. And we're still tracking storms here across parts of the Florida Panhandle. So Maria, again, this will be a multi-day event here across the southeast. Flooding is still a huge concern. All right, and uh, that is going to be a big issue come tomorrow morning. You know, you started telling that story at 5 a.m. That's when a lot of alarms will be going off getting ready for work. And so you see this map, and this is the big picture, right? So a lot of places getting the chance to pick up rain. Let's fine-tune the timing. Pick your spot on the map. When are you heading out on the roadways and how this will be impacting you? Start at 6 a.m., and a city like Atlanta, already a pretty nasty morning commute anyway, you know it's going to be rough, to say the least, especially north and west with folks coming down uh, into Atlanta, Birmingham to Montgomery. So it's the I-85 corridors, I-20, um, also 75. We'll see that straight on through the morning. So even as you're getting the kids out the door at the bus stop, it's something that you need to keep an eye on. By lunchtime in towards the evening rest, still showers now pushing into places like Athens into Columbia, uh, Columbia. still scattered showers back and through uh, Tuscaloosa and Birmingham and even through the Florida Panhandle before we start to see things quiet down by about dinner time in cities like Atlanta. But basically what you see is what you're going to get out the door tomorrow for Atlanta. It is going to be rain, temps holding into the mid 60s. Some of that will be heavy at times and that includes Charlotte as well. Now this really has been a very wet weekend across much of the south. What can we expect next weekend? Dr. Greg Postel is in the lab with more on that. Greg. There's still a chance for rain in the south. Look at the maps for next Saturday. This will be November 7th, basically a week from now. And we're seeing again more rain in the south. But I think the difference between next weekend's rain, which might linger into Sunday as well, is that it's not going to be, I don't think, the extreme type of event that we've seen the last couple of days and should move through relatively quickly and an overall dry pattern uh, ensuing across much of the central part of the country. So the weather pattern next weekend will be substantively different than what we've got now. And one of the reasons why, one of the signals you can pick up is the forecast uh, data coming in from the jet stream. You run all the different simulations and you kind of get the same answer that there are no big ridges or troughs that I don't think are going to set up next weekend. For example, next Saturday, what we're looking at is uh, jet stream kind of moving through, wiggling their way through each one of those lines. is a different forecast of the jet stream, and they all kind of have that flat-ish west-to-east flow. Some wiggles, but not big ones. No big ridges or troughs. That means no giant storms, I don't think. And what we'll end up seeing more than anything else probably is some cooler temperatures settle into the south with, in addition to the rain, maybe that little dip in the jet stream in the east might help bring some cooler air. But overall, this is the temperature pattern to expect next weekend. But I don't think it's going to last very long. As I mentioned, with that sort of more west to east flow in the jet stream, it should push it out pretty quickly. And then as we head toward the middle of the month, we're going to revert back to this warmer temperature theme in the eastern two thirds of the country with cooler temperatures in the west. That is going to be something to watch for the rest of the month. Maria, Paul, back to you. Thanks, Dr. Postel. Well, people in South Carolina continue to recover from the massive floods there earlier last month. And we sent the Weather Channel therapy dog, Butler, to try and bring some smiles to faces there, how he helped restore a little normalcy to some people there with his cuteness. Romantic moments can happen spontaneously, so why pause to take a pill? And why stop what you're doing to find a bathroom? With Cialis for daily use, you don't have to plan around either. It's the only daily tablet approved to treat erectile dysfunction, so you can be ready anytime the moment is right. Plus, Cialis treats the frustrating urinary symptoms of BPH, like needing to go frequently, day or night. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions and medicines and ask if your heart is healthy enough for sex. Do not take Cialis if you take nitrates for chest pain, as it may cause an unsafe drop in blood pressure. Do not drink alcohol in excess. Side effects may include headache, upset stomach, delayed backache, or muscle ache. To avoid long-term injury, get medical help right away for an erection lasting more than four hours. If you have any sudden decrease or loss in hearing or vision, or any symptoms of an allergic reaction, stop taking Cialis and get medical help right away. Why pause the moment? Ask your doctor about Cialis for daily use. For a free 30-tablet trial, go to Cialis.com. These are my dogs, Dusty and Cooper. I work for the dogs 24-7. I am the butler. These dogs shed like crazy. It's like being inside of a snow globe. It takes an awful lot of time to keep the house clean. I don't know what to do. 
What's this? Swiffer, sweeper, and dusters. This is nice and easy, boys. It really sticks to it. It fits in all the tight spaces. This is really great. Does that look familiar to you? I'm no longer the butler. I'm just one of the guys. Irresistible moments deserve irresistible treats. New from Meow Mix, with real salmon, chicken, or tuna. The only treat cats ask for by name. Don't miss Ace's biggest ever buy two, get one free LED sale now through Sunday. Buy any two select LED bulbs and get one free. Mix and match from our best-selling, longest-lasting LED bulbs and get over 80% in energy savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. I love you. Love you, too. One minute. Uh, we need to do this, yes. Be good. Bye. Letting go. I'll say a word. It's a little easier when you've saved for college with State Farm. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75. Winds east-southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds. High, 86. Winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. People across Central and East Texas will spend the next few days cleaning up from devastating floods. At least six deaths are connected to the weather since Friday. Houston emergency managers say 44 structures flooded there. That part of Texas was already saturated, saturated from the remnants of Hurricane Patricia. Now, Paul, you have a look at some of those incredible rainfall totals. Yeah, and incredible numbers here across much of the Texas area in the south and the Gulf Coast states as well. This is the rain over the last seven days here. You see a good chunk of central Texas. You see some uh, oranges and some yellows, but underneath where it says San Antonio, there's some pinks in there as well. And that pink is that 12 to 18 inch range of rainfall. Hence all that flooding we saw around Austin, a couple people losing their lives. Also the flooding around San Marcos as well. A uh, second time in what, uh, what four months you dealt with massive flooding flooding like that. And then yesterday morning into yesterday afternoon, heavy rain rolled on through Houston and then points eastward here in East Texas by the tune of uh, 5 to 8 to 10 to 18 inches of rain there, also pushing Louisiana and much of central Louisiana. We're talking closing in on a half foot of rain that pushes eastward into Mississippi and Alabama. So yeah, this area of the Gulf Coast states has been saturated to say the least with that rain. So it will not take uh, very long at all for any more rain to cause more flooding. Hence the flood watch is still up for much of this region. Maria? And Paul, you know, life won't quite get back to normal for a while for many in South Carolina, including Columbia. The city experienced catastrophic flooding just last month. The water has receded. Now comes the rebuilding of homes and lives. So we decided to send the Weather Channel therapy dog Butler and his handler to Columbia to visit with two families that are next door neighbors. This way. This was Butler's first deployment to a neighborhood that had been impacted by flooding, so we weren't sure what to expect. It's just been great for them to be out in the yard playing with an animal. We kind of can be out here and run around and they don't, they don't feel like anything's happened right now. Saturday night when we went Saturday to bed was pretty normal, yep, and, then, was. and then it all broke loose. All changed. 4.30 in the morning, uh, my youngest daughter, Paige, was sleeping downstairs. When I woke up, my dresser fell over. Thank goodness for the dresser falling over because that's the only way they woke up. 
there was water everywhere, and it eventually got to six feet of water downstairs. This is the water level right there. So, I mean, you can see I mean, how tall she is for the water level way up here. I mean, it got deep really quickly. Pretty scary. It was surreal. I mean, just the, that that whole morning was surreal. I don't even I don't even know how to put it into words, honestly. Speak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really sweet to um, see the dog interact, to see Butler interact with the children and, and watch them smile and do something that just felt just felt normal and um, just just feels good. I think dogs are always nice to have. They just always like cuddle and be sweet and stuff. I think his buoyancy and his joy and um, just happiness are contagious for the families that he visits. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes you smile, right? We know yeah. pets are, are therapy for sure. And again, the, the, these scars that are caused by that flooding will last for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see families, especially the kids, yeah. uh, have some laughter in the wake of that. And sometimes it's just that little nudge that kind of sets the sets the tone for what you do next. Yeah, and so. unfortunately we have more rain out there as well, so I know nerves are on edge because we were talking about the heavy rain, we saw the flooding in Texas yesterday, and more rain across Louisiana, Mississippi. It's also heading into the Carolinas, and uh, we don't expect that type of flooding there, mm -hmm. but we do expect more rain. It could be heavy at times. Yeah, well, we'll keep you posted on everything. Well, well a cargo ship that went missing in Hurricane Joaquin a month ago, well, may have been located 15,000 feet below. Yeah, coming up, how wreckage from the El Faro may have been found and what crews will use to confirm that find. Pain from your day can haunt you at night. Don't let it. Advil PM gives you the healing sleep you need, helping you fall asleep and stay asleep so your body can heal as you rest. Advil PM, for a healing night's sleep. Here's something new. Now you can get the Weather Channel forecast on the new L.L. Bean app. Just tap, shop, and discover. The new app from L.L. Bean, featuring forecasts from the Weather Channel. Download today. I tried to pen last weekend. It really made the difference between a morning around the house and getting a little exercise. Only Depend Underwear has new Confidence Core technology for fast absorption and the smooth, comfortable fit of FitFlex protection. Get a coupon at Depend.com. If my hands are dried and cracked, I can't do my job efficiently. My hands are dry from washing my hands lots of times a day. O'Keefe's Working Hands. Guaranteed relief for dry, cracked hands. O'Keefe's works. I saw it working for my husband, and I knew I had to try it. Learn more at O'Keefe'sCompany.com. Today we're getting record snowfall. Radars indicate there's been flooding throughout the area. We're getting hail the size of golf balls. Maglite. Turn your light on, America. Take Zequel and sleep like the kids went to Nana's house for the whole weekend. Zequel, the non-habit forming sleep aid that helps you sleep easily and wake refreshed because sleep is a beautiful thing. Thursdays on the Weather Channel, when nature is this dangerous, only one question matters. Oh my God! So you think you'd survive? Thursdays at 10. Life's busy, but you can stay connected to family and friends with Xfinity Voice. Create up to four additional phone numbers to enjoy unlimited nationwide talk and text anywhere you go. Plus, with features like readable voicemail and caller ID across your smartphone, tablet, even TV, you'll never miss an important message. Life's busy, and the old phone company can't keep up. So switch and save with Xfinity Voice. Just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Call or go online today. Buddy, nice place, nice car. What happened? Well, it all started with my free credit score from CreditSesame.com. They gave me so much more than a free credit score. Credit Sesame's money management tools and personalized offers saved me tons of money and helped me reach my goals. I just signed up with their free app. What's my credit score? Your credit score is 650. That's magic! No, that's CreditSesame.com. You get so much more than a free credit score, so do more with your score at CreditSesame.com. Dot com.
currently in our area, 85 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. Welcome back to Week in Recharge. An update now, in fact, on this ship. There's a wreckage now of this cargo ship that went missing during Hurricane Joaquin may have been found. Sonar equipment on a Navy ship detected what are believed to be images of the El Faro yesterday afternoon near its last known position. A remotely operated vehicle will be sent down to survey the wreckage. The El Faro was headed to Puerto Rico from Jacksonville, Florida, when it lost contact as it sailed into that hurricane just one month ago. Maria? And Paul, yeah, you look at that point in time and what uh, Joaquin was looking like. It was reaching its peak strength as a Category 4 storm. The winds were about 155 miles per hour at the center there. And you see that, that pink line um, showing the track. So obviously the, the winds and the waves at that point and where the location of the ship was, uh, obviously devastating conditions there. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on that. As far as the tropical activity, obviously the Caribbean, the Atlantic, really quiet right now. And so is the Pacific, which really, you know, it has been a while since we've had a couple consecutive tropical updates there to share uh, some quiet news in the tropics there. Now, a different story in the Arabian Sea, a very sizable storm here in Cyclone Storm, Cyclone Cyclonic storm at Chapala. That's what they call basically the hurricane in this part of the world. And you can see max winds at 120 miles per hour. It's very symmetrical. So those winds at the core, very strong. We do think the official forecast uh, saying that it's going to weaken just a little bit, but you can see the difference between a 100 mile per hour storm or maybe 80 miles per hour. You're still going to have some uh, high wind impact there in Yemen when it makes landfall at some point Monday, we think. So, Paul? Well, let's move locations now from the Middle East to the Northeast New England here. Let's give you a look, a live look at the campus of Plymouth State University in New Hampshire here. And this is just north of Concord. And you can see some great clouds out there, gray skies. But look at the colors, look at the trees. You're still seeing some brilliant reds and oranges bursting there. Now, officially on the map, they say much of New England is past peak. But I was just there last week. And trust me, it was still peaking. Depending on, you know, the wind mm -hmm. and the rain that came through the last seven days, you can still see some gorgeous colors out there. Not to mention, you can sample the apples that are fresh for picking right now. And, of course, the, oh, the maple syrup. <laughs> And past peak is still pretty, but you've got a great color from the Connecticut Valley to the lower Hudson Valley. So if you're getting out there, maybe in parts of New York State, you could be looking at this gorgeous Brock, uh, Brockport, New York, sent in by Dan. Thank you so much. Also, Trumansburg, New York, also showing you some beautiful colors with the uh, waterfall there in the distance in the background of the center of the photo. That's gorgeous. It is. We'll be right back after your local on the 8th. It's more than the cloud. It's security and flexibility. It's where great ideas and vital data are stored. With CenturyLink, you get advanced technology solutions from a trusted IT partner, including cloud and hosting services, all backed by an industry-leading broadband network and people committed to helping you grow your business. You get a company that's more than just the sum of its parts. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. I tried Depend last weekend. It really made the difference between a morning around the house and getting a little exercise. Only Depend Underwear has new Confidence Core technology for fast absorption and the smooth, comfortable fit of FitFlex protection. Get a coupon at Depend.com. Don't miss Ace's biggest ever buy two, get one free LED sale now through Sunday. Buy any two select LED bulbs and get one free. Mix and match from our best-selling, longest-lasting LED bulbs and get over 80% in energy savings. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. What average underwear feels like. 
what Duluth trading buck naked underwear feels like. Duluth trading buck naked underwear feels like wearing nothing at all. No pinch, no stink, no sweat. Get a pair only at DuluthTrading.com. I'll take the check. <laughs> and I'll take a fun guy with a killer smile. Are you on eHarmony? I can't be. I'm not religious at all. Are you looking for true love? Absolutely. Then you'd be perfect for eHarmony. You know, we've helped over a million people get married. Huh. We have some killer smiles, too. You know, eHarmony might be the best tip I've ever gotten. Oh, yeah, better take care of that. <laughs> Stop waiting. Start communicating for free today. You pay your auto insurance premium every month on the dot. You're like the poster child for paying on time. And then one day, you tap the bumper of a station wagon. No big deal until your insurance company jacks up your rates. You freak out. What good is having insurance if you get punished for using it? Hey, insurance companies, newsflash. Nobody's perfect. For drivers with accident forgiveness, Liberty Mutual won't raise your rates due to your first accident. See car insurance in a whole new light. Liberty Mutual Insurance. How to make an awesome weather science show. Take three scientists. That's us. That's scientists. scientist. Yeah. They know that. Add the forces of nature. Stuff. Mix in some crazy experiments. Lit my hand on fire. Why? Because of science. Oh, that is so cool. And then... Go! Who said science isn't fun? Three scientists walk into a bar. Bottoms up Sunday nights at 10 on the Weather Channel. And join the community now on Facebook.com slash three scientists. Welcome back to Weekend Recharge. It is the day after Halloween, November 1st, new month, but also it's Sunday. Are you ready for some football? Because we got a big time grudge match going on in the Steel City today. The Steelers of Pittsburgh hosting the undefeated Cincinnati Bengals and the NFL Network's Aditi Kinkabwala is at Heinz Field with a look at the weather conditions. The rain stopped here in Pittsburgh, and in fact, the sun is peeking through. It's expected to be clear, and temperatures should rise into the lower 60s. Now, the undefeated Cincinnati Bengals come in here to town, led by Andy Dalton. He leads the NFL in QB rating. But it's the quarterback on the other side, Ben Roethlisberger, who's making the news today. He returns after a four-game absence with a knee issue. He said this week he shouldn't be limited in any way. For the Weather Channel, Aditi Kinkabwala, NFL Network. All right, thanks, Aditi. Here's your forecast. Some clouds out there right now giving way to some sunshine. But here's the deal. Look at the winds. We're talking at times uh, 10 to 15 miles per hour. And that will have an impact on this game. And we have no forecast in terms of who will win. Just a forecast for the weather. We're not going to pick this game. As we head on towards Baltimore, another big matchup of some cellar dwellers here. We've got two and five Chargers. Joe Go Chargers going in to take on uh, one and six Baltimore Ravens. And again, you'll see some breaks in the clouds here. Temperatures on the warm side, upper 60s as we head to the afternoon. And also the afternoon game here in Oakland. Plenty of sunshine as the Jets go in to take the surprising 3-3, three and three, decent-looking Oakland Raiders so far this season. What about tonight's game? Well, big-time matchup of two undefeated Packers going into Denver to take on the Broncos. Both teams 6-0. and oh. Weather, pretty nice. So, again, not too hot, not too cold, but the altitude definitely could be a factor later in the game. And then, hey, tomorrow, also undefeated Carolina Panthers could see some rain showers in uh, Charlotte as they host the three and four Indianapolis Colts. Temperatures falling off to the 50s throughout the game. We'll back after this. Our veterans are all around us, but it's hard to show them our appreciation when, out of uniform, they're more camouflaged than ever. America, this Veterans Day, let's shine a light on our veterans by changing one light to green and keep it glowing every day. Because even if we can't see them, they should always be able to see our support. Visit GreenLightEvet.com to learn more. If you have moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, isn't it time to let the real you shine through? Introducing Otesla, a Premolast. Otesla is not an injection or a cream. It's a pill that treats plaque psoriasis differently. Some people who took Otesla saw 75% clearer skin after four months. And Otesla's prescribing information has no requirement for routine lab monitoring. 
Don't take Otesla if you are allergic to any of its ingredients. Otesla may increase the risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Side effects may include diarrhea, nausea, upper respiratory tract infection, and headache. Tell your doctor about all the medicines you take and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Ask your doctor about Otesla today. Otesla, show more of you. Currently in our area, 85 degrees under partly cloudy skies. Today, partly cloudy, high 86, winds southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, clear to partly cloudy, low 75, winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Monday, sun and a few passing clouds, high 86, winds